Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we have what I think is a rather fun or at least lighthearted video for you today. Not so much for the individual Los Angeles Police Department officers that got fired as a result of this story, but for the rest of us. On your screen right now is the logo to a game that I think many of you are probably familiar with, Pokemon Go which is an augmented reality application that allows you, if you are so inclined, to travel the world with your phone or iPad, look for Pokemon, capture them, and do whatever else it is that you do in the Pokemon Go video game. Now, this became very, very popular, oh, I don't know, about five years ago, and there were legal questions about its application. Folks were going into private locations to actually capture these Pokemon. They were going into things like funerals and cemeteries that got a lot of play in the national and international press. And that basically dissipated as Pokemon Go continues to rake in the money, but isn't quite the phenomenon fad that it was that number of years ago. That said, a number of folks still find themselves playing it and playing it while they're otherwise engaged with other professional pursuits. Now, before we talk about those specific pursuits for the police officers in question. I do want to point out this channel is Patreon supported. If you're at all interested in helping us continue to have these kinds of conversations, please do check out our Patreon. And one of those tiers is allowing you to support a specific episode every given month. Special thanks to this episode for the support of Nord, who supports us through the Patreon. Again, if you're interested in doing that, please do check it out. Thanks again to Nord. Now, this episode is actually going to take the form of just walking through this particular document certified for publication a few days ago in the Court of Appeal of the State of California, the Second Appellate District Division 3, in which two Los Angeles Police Department officers are appealing the decision made by the city of Los Angeles to fire them. Now, if you're at all familiar with the way police officers are hired and fired, suspended, it is a very difficult thing to do. There are high bars to this. Uh, and certainly that's one of the areas of political consideration that people have been talking about for, quite frankly, a number of years now. But putting that aside, this, I think, is a case that everybody can agree on is an area where the police officers should definitely be disciplined. And spoiler alert, they're going to lose this appeal. Ultimately, this finding in this document is going to affirm that the city of Los Angeles can fire these folks. And why were they fired? What were they doing? Let's dive in. Louis Lozano and Eric Mitchell are the petitioners. They're the ones that were fired. They're the police officers. They're appealing the decision to fire them. They are former police officers for the city of Los Angeles, challenging the city's decision to terminate their employment. A board of rights found petitioners, again, those are the officers, guilty on multiple counts of misconduct based in part on a digital in-car video system, what they call the DICVS, recording that captured petitioners willfully abdicating their duty to assist a commanding officer's response to a robbery while playing a Pokemon mobile phone game on duty. That's right. Not only did these officers get fired for abdicating their duty, which is obviously the biggest issue with this whole setup, they did it while playing Pokemon Go, which is really why this story came to my attention and was linked to me by a couple of folks on social media in the first place. Because if you're going to have references to Pokemon Go in a document this serious, you're going to come up with some pretty funny footnotes. Uh, and certainly that's a part of this as well. So that's the overview of what happened. But let's talk about the specifics because I think it's as interesting as the rest. On set Saturday, April 15th, 2017, petitioners were working as partners assigned to a footbeat patrol in the Los Angeles Police Department's Southwest Division. Captain Darnell Davenport was the patrol's commanding officer. It was a busy Saturday in the Southwest Division. There were more calls than police cars available to respond, and there had been a homicide earlier in the day. While en route to the homicide scene, Captain Davenport heard a radio call for a 211, a robbery, in progress with multiple suspects at the Macy's in the Crenshaw Mall. When the call came in, the captain could see the Macy's from where he was stopped, and to his right, he noticed a police car tucked back in an alley just feet away. He was not able to identify the unit. When the unit did not respond to a radio call, the captain assumed it might be a traffic unit or a unit from a different division using a different radio frequency. 
Consequently, Captain Davenport decided he would respond to the call and notified communications he was going code six on the call, i.e. he was responding to the location of the robbery. So we have a couple of numbers here. 211 is a robbery in their code system, and then code six means I'm on my way. At around the same time, the captain saw the police car, which he had seen really close to where he was going anyway, start to back up down the alley and then negotiate a left-hand turn to leave the area. So that's Captain Davenport. He gets a call of a robbery. He says, oh, okay, I will go to that robbery. He sees a police car where he thinks he might need to be going anyway. They don't respond to the radio. So he presses on, says he's going to go code six on that call. Enter Sergeant Gomez, who was in the watch commander's office when the robbery in progress call went out. He described the next five to seven minutes as chaotic with communication sending constant updates as to what was happening at the Macy's where the robbery is occurring. As Captain Davenport went code six on the robbery, as he went towards the robbery location, Sergeant Gomez looked at the watch commander's board and saw petitioner's unit was code six in the Crenshaw corridor. He attempted to radio petitioner's unit. Again, petitioners are the officers we're interested in here and requested that they respond to the Crenshaw mall to assist the captain, but he received no response. Simultaneously, a unit broke away from the homicide crime scene, pretty important, and went code three, red lights and sirens from across the division to assist at the mall. So again, setting the scene here, we've got Captain Davenport seeing an officer or seeing a unit, a car, where he thinks he needs to go anyway. They're not responding to the radio. Sergeant Gomez believes that these folks are also in the relative location where they need to be to go help on this robbery. They try to get contact with these particular officers to no avail. And finally, someone at the homicide scene goes screaming across the district to actually go and help Captain Davenport at this particular robbery. All the while, while this one car slinks around an alleyway and turns left and goes to the quote unquote Crenshaw corridor. Sergeant Gomez has questions about this. After discussing their duties, Sergeant Gomez asked petitioners if they had heard a call for backup at Crenshaw Mall for a 211. Officer Mitchell said he had not. While Officer Lozano said he heard Captain Davenport was code six, but he did not hear a, re a request for backup. Sergeant Gomez counseled petitioners that we have to listen to the radio. It's what our livelihood and our safety depends on. And he asked them if their radios were working. He's told then by Officer Mitchell that there was a lot of music and it's really loud in the park, especially on Saturdays. Sergeant Gomez asked petitioners if they had any questions regarding his concerns. And he reiterated that the best practice was to be in a location where they could hear their radio. In his testimony to the Board of Rights, the sergeant explained, at that point, when I was having those particular interactions with these folks, my understanding was that the robbery call wasn't heard because they were at the park. And like I said, I could not dispute that. He concluded the meeting by advising petitioners that he was counseling them for not listening to the radio and left it at that. So as of right now, from this story, as Sergeant Gomez tells it to the board here and as the court in question relays it, he thinks that they're doofuses that weren't listening to their radio. They potentially did get too far from the radio, heard too much music in the park and weren't able to respond for that reason. But then he has a recollection. These cars are taped. There's a DICVS recording how these officers conduct their business. Sergeant Gomez still uneasy about the timing of petitioner's code six on the Crenshaw corridor. When he came into the work the following day, it then dawned on him to review their patrol unit's DICVS recording to find out what they do on their average day. And we're going to skip the back end of this document, but this is one of the areas where the officers are upset. They say that you shouldn't be able to use these recordings against them in this fashion. Ultimately, as I said, the court will find here that this is okay to use the recordings to eliminate bad policing in this capacity. Sergeant Gomez's review of the DICVS recording revealed new and disturbing facts. It had been petitioner's patrol unit that Captain Davenport saw in the alley only a short distance from the mall. Petitioners did hear the radio call about a robbery in progress. They discussed the call and whether they should assist Captain Davenport. And then they went code six on the Crenshaw corridor. They left to conceal that they had decided not to respond to the call. The DICVS recording disclosed that immediately after Captain Davenport's code six broadcast, Officer Lanzano asked Officer Mitchell if they were code six on the Crenshaw corridor or on the corner near the mall where they were parked. Mitchell responded that they were at the corner and noted the broadcast radio call was Davenport. Lozano then instructed Mitchell to put them code six at the corridor, adding after some laughter, 
Always a good reference in a legal document. Regarding Captain Davenport, I don't want to be his help. So again, the context here is you've got police officers that are at where they need to be to help stop a robbery. They've got requests on the radio to help stop that robbery. They are ignoring them and talking amongst themselves that they don't want to be the help. They don't want to be the backup to aid in what is nominally their professional duties. But here's, of course, where the story becomes video game related. Based on the interviews in the DICVS recording, Detective McCallahan concluded petitioners willfully failed to respond to the robbery call and attempted to conceal the fact by placing themselves Code 6 somewhere else. After carefully listening to the DICVS recording a number of times, Detective McClanahan also became concerned that petitioners were playing the Pokemon Go video game, in quotes, while on duty the day of the robbery. Footnote number two. And what does footnote number two tell us? According to evidence admitted at the Board of Rights hearing, Pokemon Go is an augmented reality mobile phone game that uses the mobile device GPS to locate, capture, battle, and train virtual creatures called Pokemon, which appear as if they are in the player's real-world location. The game is credited with popularizing location-based and augmented reality technology, promoting physical activity, and helping local businesses grow due to increased foot traffic. However, the game also attracted controversy for contributing to accidents and creating public nuisances. I like this footnote because it's all accurate, but you can see, and you can see this in a lot of legal documents, exactly what the adjudicator wants you to take away. The very last thing they mentioned about Pokemon Go is, hey, this has caused a lot of trouble for folks. Not only is this a dereliction of duty as we've already described it, these folks running away from a robbery call, but also Pokemon Go might itself be a bad thing, which I don't think is fair to the application on the whole, but it is an interesting side note from all this. The recording showed that approximately 6.09 p.m., just five minutes after Officer Lizado said screw it to checking in with communications about the robbery call, Officer Mitchell alerted Lozano that Snorlax just popped up at 46th and Limert. After noting that Limert doesn't go all the way to 46th, Lozano responded, oh, you know what I can do? I'll go down 11th and swing up on Crenshaw. I know that way I can get to it. We got four minutes. And for approximately the next 20 minutes, the DICVS captured petitioners discussing Pokemon as they drove to different locations where the virtual creatures apparently appeared on their mobile phones. And in case you aren't familiar with Snorlax as a term, we get the wonderful four, footnote three. According to evidence admitted at the Board of Rights hearing, Snorlax is a Pokemon creature known as the sleeping Pokemon. Indeed, if we look at the Pokemon database itself, Snorlax, number 143, category, sleeping with the abilities of thick and fat with special immunity and a weight of 1,000 pounds. He's a big guy, and if you find a Snorlax, well, maybe you just have to drop everything, although I don't recommend it if you're on duty as a Los Angeles police officer. After that 20-minute discussion of Pokemons, on their way to the Snorlax location, Officer Mitchell alerted Officer Lozano that a Togetic just popped up noting that it was on Crenshaw, just south of 50th. And we get footnote four. According to evidence admitted at the Board of Rights hearing, Togetic is a Pokemon creature known as a happy, cheerful, and ditzy Pokemon. And again, we see category happiness, abilities, serene grace, and hustle. Hustle being something that these officers would appear to need in their day-to-day -day obligations. They continue with all of this after Mitchell apparently caught the Snorlax, exclaiming, got him! Petitioners agreed to go get the Togetic and drove off. When their car stopped again, the DICVS recorded Mitchell saying, don't run away, don't run away, while Lozano described how he buried it and ultra-balled the Togetic before announcing, got him. Mitchell advised he was still trying to catch it, adding, holy crap, man, this thing is fighting the crap out of me. Eventually, Mitchell exclaimed, holy crap, finally, apparently in reference to capturing the Togetic, and he remarked, the guys are gonna be so jealous. Now, I don't know about you. I am not a police officer. I don't work in law enforcement. I've watched shows like The Wire or The Shield or others like it. I can't even imagine two police officers bringing the old Pokemon Go back to the headquarters and getting the other officers jealous about the Pokemon they captured while on patrol. But who knows? Detective McClanahan conducted a second round of interviews with petitioners to discuss her concern that they were playing a video game while on duty Petitioners denied playing a video game. They claimed they were merely having a conversation about Pokemon Go, and Officer Mitchell had been receiving text messages and alerts from a Pokemon Go players group where people were bragging about their scores. Detective McClanahan determined petitioners were not being truthful. 
Petitioners also denied playing Pokemon Go while on duty. They claimed they were monitoring a Pokemon tracker application on their phone, not playing the game itself. As for catching Pokemon, Officer Lozano insisted this referred to capturing an image of a Pokemon on the tracking application to share with friends, while Officer Mitchell said his statements about fighting the Togetic referred to relaying that information to the groups on my app and adding that in order to take the picture, occasionally the creature will fight. Lozano said they were not engaged in a game. Rather, it was a social media event. That should definitely be the difference, by the way. If you're in this situation, hopefully you won't find yourself in it. And they say, well, you're playing a game. You say, no, no, no. I was not playing a game. I was playing a social media event. Mitchell said he did not consider the application a game because it was not advertised as a game. I love this. This is going to get into the Roblox conversation on Epic versus Apple. Is that games? Are those experiences? Who knows? Petitioners admitted leaving their footbeat area in search of Snorlax, okay, but they insisted they did so both as part of an extra patrol. Hey, look, we're just going to investigate the neighborhood a little bit more, but also to chase this mythical creature. I just love that a digital augmented representation is somehow ensconced in actual legal documentation as part of an investigation from a detective, and they say we're going to chase this mythical digital creature. What can you say about this story other than this is how you do get fired as a police officer? The Board of Rights reached a unanimous verdict finding petitioners guilty on all, but the count alleging they failed to handle an assigned radio call. Regarding the penalty, the board found petitioners were disingenuous and deceitful in their remarks throughout the board hearing. Their willful failure to respond to the robbery in progress and attempt to conceal their whereabouts, demonstrating a severe negative attitude and disdain towards Captain Davenport, who was proceeding towards a robbery. Their inattention to duty while playing a mobile phone game violated the trust of the public and represented unprofessional and embarrassing behavior, and the board unanimously recommended petitioners be removed from employment with the department. And as I said, I'm going to skip the back half of this. This is actually where this document happens to talk about why their firing was effectively upheld, that the videos were okay, that the interview process was okay. None of that is as significant or, frankly, as interesting for purposes of our conversations as the fact that in this particular story, these officers not only rejected the duty that they're getting paid to do, they rejected it in such a fashion so that they could go capture Snorlax and Togetic and whatever other Pokemon, all while apparently chittering like schoolgirls about the fact they were going to get these mythical creatures while in their patrol car and then objecting to the fact that tapes of their behavior were used against them. Like I said, a fairly light story here in virtual legality today, but if you take anything from it, if you are an officer of the law, don't play Pokemon Go on duty. And if you're going to capture a Snorlax, make sure that it's all worth it because you might just lose your job if you're doing it while you're otherwise being paid to do something else. This has been Virtual Legality for today. Again, if you like our conversations about the business and law of technology, software, video games, pop culture, and more, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. We can't do it without viewers and listeners like you and like Nord. Thanks again for specially endorsing and sponsoring this particular video. Otherwise, if you just subscribe, tell your friends we're having conversations like these on YouTube and your favorite podcast stations. Every little bit helps. If you did see this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.